Who's your emergency contact? Who should we notify in the case of death? Welcome to the USP, where I spent the last two plus decades of my life. Um, just want to wish everybody, before we start, a happy 4th of July, a happy Independence Day. You know, this is my first one in a long time. As you can see, I'm excited. I've been invited to my sister's 4th of July party. She told us we have to wear like, um, I mean, uh, I don't know, like 4th of July stuff, flag stuff. So I got some stars and some polka dots on the stars. <laughs> but happy 4th of July. I don't really have any uh, 4th of July story as far as like anything that, that happened in the penitentiary. So the story I'm going to share for you for the 4th of July is going to be a story about Hitler's birthday. I know, don't panic, don't leave, don't hang up. Don't, I mean, don't hang up, don't, don't turn off the screen, but just hang out with me. I'm in Florence, Colorado right now, USP Florence. You know, this happened back in, uh, in the early 2000s, before my time, but I, but I had a few homies that was there at the time that it happened. You know, so, but I didn't hear it from my homeboys that was there at the time because I haven't ran into my homeboys since we've been separated and got locked up in the, in the prison. But right now I'm in USP Florence. So when I'm there, I meet a few people that was there at the time. Because, you know, it's been over 20 something years where people get shipped around the penitentiary and sometime. 15, 20 years later, they end up back in a spot that they once were before. You know, it's not uncommon. So there was a few people there when I was, when I was just there that had been in Florence at the time of the riot. But also, you know, when you're doing time, you're hanging out, you're working around or whatever, these COs, they like to share stories of the shit that they've seen while working in the penitentiary. And one of the things that they, that I always heard a lot of was about this riot that I'm about to share with you. So I'm just put, I'm just piecing the stories together from the bits and pieces that people shared with me. I guess the day of the incident was Hitler's birthday. And you know, the Nazis, the skinheads, and all the races, whatever groups, they make a big deal for that. You know, all the white boys, they would have for Hitler's birthday, like a workout regimen. You have to like run 48 laps or something, do 1,400 and what was it? Eight, I think it's 1408. I don't know, but these numbers, they all play significant roles in the, in the Nazi culture, right? So they do all these things to celebrate, you know, um, Hitler's birthday. Like when we was in Lompoc, for whatever celebration you want to celebrate, for us, it was for the Hawaiian king, King Kamehameha. So for, for us, they let us cook a, a meal, but we had to cook it for the whole compound. But same thing when the Mexicans wants to do their uh, Cinco de Mayo, you know, celebration. They, they hook it up and cook for the whole compound. And let me tell you, dudes that cook those meals, they know what they're doing. They be, they be hooking it up. You're not going to be in the kitchen trying to cook a meal for the whole population if you don't know what you're doing because that's a quick way to get yourself killed. Yeah, I know. You can cook bad food and get yourself killed back in Lob Pot. And that's real shit, right? So, so, but in Lompoc, part, if you do for one, you got to do for all. If you let one race or one group celebrate their New Year's, their Independence Day, their holiday, then you have to allow all race to do it. So when the white boys, they celebrate Hitler's birthday. And for Hitler's birthday, they would cook um, them little cabbage looking things. I don't know what the hell they call. Brussels sprout. Uh, 
some sauerkraut. I think some sausages. They said it was like Hitler's like favorite meal or something, but every year when they cook it, all the blacks boycott their meal. They don't go eat that lunch period where the food is cooked. I don't know no better and I don't care. So, you know, it's lunchtime. I don't know who's celebrating whose holiday. And if I go through and it happened to be, oh, it's Hitler's birthday. Oh, well, I'm going to eat me some freaking Brussels sprout and some fucking sausages. I don't care. But my point is that, you know, back then, if they allow someone to do something, they got to allow everybody else to do it. So on this day in Florence, they were out there. They got their wine. You know, they've been brewing their wine, saving it up. You know, make they got their moonshine. You know, you cook your wine and make moonshine. So they're out there partying, having a good old time. And, uh... You know, but once you're intoxicated and drunk, your lips get loose. Your common sense goes out the window. Your sense of courtesy, your sense of respect. You know, when you're intoxicated, really you're your true self. Somebody don't give a fuck or whatever, had to taper his behavior in society to fit in or whatever. When you're drunk, you don't care and you're just going to be Whatever it is you're going to be. If you're a nice dude, you're a nice dude. If you're a fucking dick, you're a dick. So they're out there doing their hell Hitler, hell Hitler, which no one cares. But they're out there talking shit. And one of them kept repeating the N-word. And a couple of black dudes, you know, the Crip homies, they were out there in the yard and they heard. And they heard that shit. These white boys over there saying the N-word. So the Crip homie, I don't know if I got his name. I don't know if it's the right, but I think uh, K-Head, older, older homie, went over there and told him, hey, man, stop being disrespectful out here, homie. And they're like, oh, all right. Or a couple of them was like, yeah, no, nah, it was good. But, and they walked, you know, but a couple of other ones had an attitude about it. But K head, he's an old head. He's an old crip, old head from the Crip, Crip Nation. And you know, his generation, those that was a very serious generation. The generation before us, there was a lot of serious individuals. You know. And I don't care what race. I don't care what gang. These were these are hardcore men, because back then you weren't going to the pen unless you had 20 plus years. So by the time I met these individuals, they've already been in the system 20 plus years, already been through the ringer, you know? So whatever, K had a couple homies, they walked away. You know, they, the white boys agreed to be like res more respectful or watch their language or whatever. But of course they're all drunk and some of them probably felt some type of way and continue saying the N-word. And the whole yard blew up. All the It's not just the crit, but it's all the blacks. And it's not just the skinhead whites, even though they're the one out there drinking, partying, doing the hell Hitler and all that stuff. It's all the whites. Because even though you're an independent white boy and got nothing to do with the racist stuff that's going on here, when it's a racial war, when it's a race riot, the black dude that's coming at you, he's not going to stop to see if you got a swastika on you. Everybody's in self-defense mode, survival mode. So you, you know, it's this other, op the opposition looks like this. So here we go. And two people end up getting killed that day. A white guy got killed. And a black guy got killed. You know, it probably started out like a very nice afternoon. Sun was out. People walking in the yard enjoying themselves. But at the end of the day, two families got phone calls asking them where they want the body delivered. Why? 
because a few people didn't know how to act. You know, whether they were intoxicated or not, you know, being intoxicated is not an excuse. It's never an excuse. And especially in there, you know, if you get drunk, if you get high, and you don't, you know, watch your language, you might never know why you died. You know. Well, I hope you guys enjoy your 4th of July. <laughs> Thank you so much for all you guys' love and support. Please, if you like, if you like this content, I ask you to share it with everybody you know. Hit that subscribe button. Like the video. You know, leave a comment. Ask me whatever questions you want to know. You already know I don't duck any questions. I love to engage with you guys, and I'm so appreciative for your support. Man, thank you. Welcome to the USP.